This video is to help you revise ecology equipment. So as part of your study or part of your course, you had to conduct a habitat study. There is often an emphasis on studying the grassland habitat, mainly because it's near to the school grounds. However, you still need to know pieces of equipment that you may not have used during that grassland study, but could have, and also pieces of equipment that would be used if you were studying an aquatic habitat, such as a stream or a river or the shore. The Tulgren funnel. This is a piece of equipment used when you have a soil sample and you want to identify what small animals or insects are in that soil sample. So you place your sample on the gauze and then the lamp is going Going to provide a heat source. You leave it for 24 hours. The lamp is providing the heat and the insects are going to try and get away from that heat by moving around in the soil and if they're small enough they'll fall through the gauze into the funnel and be collected in that beaker of alcohol. A disadvantage to using this is that the animals or the insects are killed by the alcohol. The specimens that you do collect you can use lenses or a microscope together with a key to identify what exactly they are. Another piece of equipment is the Behrman funnel. This may not even be in your textbook and you probably haven't used it, but it's good to know. So you collect a specimen of soil or a sample of soil and you put it into a little muslin bag. That's like a gauze bag. The muslin bag is tied and positioned so that it's hanging into this funnel that is filled with water. Rubber tubing is attached to the end of the funnel and the tubing is closed with a clip. So after a number of hours, the heat from the lamp is making the water inside that funnel get warmer and any organisms inside the muslin bag that are small enough will pass out of it and into the water trying to get away from the heat. After a number of hours, you come back and you open up the clip and collect the water out of that funnel. Often nematodes, these little tiny worms, are what are collected when using the Berman funnel. A grapnel is a piece of equipment used to collect aquatic plants. You throw it into the water and plants will get entangled in the three prongs. You pull it out with the rope and you use a key to identify your specimens. A plankton net is used to collect microscopic plants and animals, so phytoplankton and zooplankton. These are found in water. The net is made of very fine mesh and at the bottom of the net is this little bottle which is attached with a clip and any water that is driven through the net will be collected in that little bottle and in that there should be whatever specimens, whatever phytoplankton and zooplankton are in the water. When you want to collect larger animals you set a mammal trap. Mammal traps should be placed out for 24 hours and checked every 24 hours. If there is an animal trapped in it, you must release it back to the wild without being hurt. It's a good idea to ensure that there is some bedding in the trap, like wood shavings or hay or straw, just to ensure that the animal is kept warm if it's caught overnight. Also, you need to place some food in, some bait to entice the animal to enter. But the big thing about mammal traps is that they're checked regularly and if there is an animal, they're freed once you see them. A pitfall trap is set up when you want to collect insects such as beetles, centipedes, woodlice, etc. Using a trowel, dig out some soil and position your container so that it's flush or in line with ground level. So any insects walking along will just simply fall into the container. To protect them from the rain, you can get two stones and place a piece of wood over them or you can place another larger stone on them. Leave for 24 hours and then come back and identify any of the insects you've captured and release them back nearby. Another type of trap is a cryptozoic trap. There can be natural cryptozoic traps like fallen logs where insects will go underneath them and hide because they're warm and they're moist areas. When you want to identify the insects, gently roll the log over and use a key. You can also make a cryptozoic trap with a plank of wood. Just ensure you leave it for a few days before you examine underneath it. Another way of collecting insects is using a pooter. So you can see in the picture here, there is a clear tube and then there's a green tube. You place the clear tube near to where the insect is and then you suck in through the green tube. The green tubing at the very end has a piece of gauze or a cap so the insect will not get sucked into your mouth. It will simply land in the clear pot and it cannot go anywhere else. You identify it and release it. The next piece of equipment is a beading tray. The more modern version of a beading tray is this one. However, you may have used the older version, which looks a bit like an upside down umbrella. So what do you do with it? You place it under a tree or under a hedge and using a stick, you shake the hedge or the tree and any insects on the leaves will fall onto the beading tray. You can identify them directly using a key or if you want, you can suck them up using the pooter. And this sometimes makes it easier to identify those insects. 
In spring and summer, there's often lots of flying insects that we want to capture and to identify, butterflies and different types of bees. And to do this, we use a sweep net. So a sweep net has a long handle and a long net, and you basically just sweep it over the top of long vegetation, capturing any of those flying insects. You identify them and you gently release them. This is a square frame known as a quadrat, and you use this when you were calculating percentage frequency. It was one of those studies, those quantitative studies of a known plant. This is the grid quadrat. It's a square frame, once again, of a known area, and it's divided into different sections or grids. We call them hits, and we use the grid quadrat when we're doing percentage cover. As part of your habitat study, you also had to look at abiotic factors and one of those abiotic factors, which is also an edaphic factor, a factor related to the soil, was soil pH. The pH of the soil will influence the type of plants that are growing in your habitat. So we used a soil pH meter for this. Perhaps you use this particular meter in your class when you were carrying out your habitat study. So this is a great device because it's not only measuring soil pH, it's also measuring light intensity, another abiotic factor, and also the moisture of the soil. So that's an edaphic factor. Another abiotic factor and also an edaphic factor is the temperature of the soil. So we use soil thermometers to measure the temperature of the soil. Another abiotic factor is the wind speed, and this is measured using an anemometer. We used a digital anemometer as shown here in the picture, but you could also have in your classroom a manual version, which looks something like this little diagram. Finally, the line transect. The line transect is a rope, and along that rope are markings. These markings are placed at fixed positions every 0.5 metres usually. You place the line transect into the ground. It's pinned into the ground and you start at one end of the rope and you identify every plant that touches each of those markings. One application of the line transect is looking at the distribution of plants and how they change when you move from a shaded area of the habitat out into a more brighter area. So from low light intensity to higher light intensity. Something important to remember is that as part of the habitat study, you had to identify five animals. Fauna means animals. So make sure you can list those five animals and know some adaptations. You also had to be able to identify five plants. Flora means plants. Make sure you can do that. Make sure you can list them. Very important. Ecology is really important. It's so worthwhile reading those chapters in your book in detail. You could be asked anything on the habitat study this year. So watch the other videos, use your textbook, do the past papers. Best of luck.